Hey guys, today's video is going to be about how to graph the greatest integer function, which is probably one of the hardest parent functions to graph. It's just weird. It's something that you probably haven't seen before this class. And so let's just get it going. So the way it's written a lot of times, you can put brackets around it. That would imply greatest integer. Or on the calculator, I think you can say something like int. And then you'll put in the x, and that'll do the greatest integer function. And so the greatest integer function, I want you to think of it think of it exactly how it sounds. So let's label all our integers. We've got one, two, three, we'll go all the way up to four. Same thing on the y. We'll start just with the positives and get that part down first. Okay, so whenever I start the greatest integer function, I like to start with a point on the origin. So let's fill that point in. Then immediately, let's think about something like in between. Let's think about the point, point five. What is the greatest integer of 0.5? Integers, remember, are only whole numbers. They're like counting numbers. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. Then also, they, the thing about integers, they also go negative. So it's like negative 1, negative 2, etc. So if we've got 0.5, what is the biggest integer that it's, that it's got? So we're right here at 0.5. Well, it looks like 0. Because you always have to look to the left. Let's think about that too. So if we have like 1.9999, the biggest integer it has is 1. Okay, so now let's think about that. If 0.5, the greatest integer is 0. So if x is 0.5, y is going to be the greatest integer, and that's 0. So we know that it's going to go be going like this. Let me draw a straight line here. And then once we get to exactly the point 1, so now we are on the point 1. What is the greatest integer if we are on 1? Well, it's 1. So we're going to go all the way up to 1, and then we're going to draw an open circle. Because at the point 1, the greatest integer is not 0, but 1. So then we can draw a closed circle right there. And this pattern is going to continue again and again. So again, we're going to go like this. And then at 1.999, notice that this, the greatest integer is still that 1. But then right when it hits 2, the greatest integer becomes 2. So that's just going to keep going forever. And when you think about it in the positive um, realm, I guess, it's it makes sense. When we get into negatives, it gets really confusing. So I'll have to think about that a little bit more. So then 4, the biggest integer in 4, well, that's 4. So this step function is what I like to call it. It's going to continue forever. It's going to keep going up. It's going to fill in all the way. And then there's going to be a circle, open circle. Then it's going to step up then go all the way, open circle, step up, all the way again. This will continue forever. OK, so now let's think about the negative direction. Just integers again, because this is the greatest integer function. We've got negative 2, negative 3, all the way down to negative 4. Same thing in the y's, negative 1. That's not really drawn to scale. Negative 1, negative 2. I drew that exactly where it was. Negative 3 and negative 4. Okay. So again, I want to look at a number line here because that helps me kind of visualize what I'm working with. And let's put 0 in over here because we're working with negatives. Negative 1, negative 2. OK. So at the point negative 0.5, for example, let's figure out what the greatest integer of that is. So we're right here at negative 0.5. And remember here, when we were at positive 0.5, we always went to the left. And whatever number was to the left was our greatest integer. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing. The greatest integer, well, 0 0.5, we're going to look to the left. The greatest integer is going to be negative 1. It's not going to be 0 because negative 0 0.5 is less than 0. 0 is greater than negative 0 0.5, so that can't be it. So again, at po negative 0 0.5, we know we're at this negative 1. So because when x is negative 0.5, y is the greatest integer, which is negative 1. So now we're going to have an open circle at this negative 1, at this point 0, negative 1, then a closed circle at negative 1, negative 1. Because that is when um, the other one would change. So here we have, now remember, see that the pattern is continuing. So again, you can kind of infer we're going to have a closed circle here. And then it's going to go again. It's going to fill in over here. And then it's going to be closed. I should have said open there. And then open. Then it's going to go to the left and then close. And then it's going to step down, go up right here. 
and close. So you see the pattern has not stopped. We're still going in this direction. And if you notice, every time on the right side of the um, graph is the open circle, and on the left side of the um, line is the closed circle. So that's going to continue forever. And the reason is, just think about a number line. So if anyone asks you, when you're using this function, say, what is the greatest integer of negative 2.8? All right, well, let's look at our number line. We'll start negative 2, end up at negative 3. We're at negative 2.8. Well, let's think about our trick. We always need to look to the left, and the first integer we find, that's the greatest one. So here, greatest integer of negative 2.8 is negative 3. So when x equals 2.8, x equals negative 2.8, the greatest integer, which is the y, would be negative 3. So that's it. If you can draw the graph, you'll be able to figure it out, because now you can look at the points. So if we were looking at this negative 2.8, we'd say, OK, there it is. We would draw our line down. We'd see what x equals. Well, x equals that negative 3 right there. And now let's think about the domain and range of the greatest integer function. Um, I'll write that up here. Domain. Remember that that's the x values that you can plug in. Well, it looks like we have infinitely many x values. We can go all the way down to negative infinity, all the way up to infinity, because while it jumps, so you might think, OK, well, at the point negative 1, there's an open hole. But the thing is, there's a closed hole right above it, and that's at every point. Like 2, open hole, but there's a closed hole right above it. So the domain is um, still continuing. So it would be all real numbers, or written as negative infinity, all the way to positive infinity. Now, the range is a little bit more confusing. Because as you see, it's jumping each time. So the greatest integer is never going to be negative 3.5 because that's not even an integer, so it can't be. So the range is just all integers. So greatest integer function has a range of all integers. And again, you can just think about the graph like that. And you know, if um, every y value has to be an integer, obviously that's going to be the range of it. So that's our domain and range, and here's our graph. Let me know if you have any questions. This can be a really tough concept to grasp at first, but if you just practice it and draw it out. And remember, the best thing to do, for me, for me at least, is to start with a point on the origin and just start going right and then open circle. Then I can just go from there, because then I know every other one, it's got to be point, uh, go right, open circle, and then I can, I can figure it out from there. So start at the origin with a closed circle, go to the right, and then draw your open circle at one, and you've got it, and then you just draw your steps. So thanks for watching. Hope this was able to help.